John chapter 6. I think we can do the whole thing. We'll see. After these things, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they beheld the signs which he did on them that were sick. Everybody likes to follow Jesus enough to get healed. And Jesus went up to the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Jesus therefore lifting up his eyes, and seeing that a great multitude cometh unto him, saith unto Philip, Whence are we to buy bread that these may eat? And he said, And this he said to prove him, for he knew, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred shillings worth of bread is not enough, is not sufficient for them that everyone may take a little. So that's two hundred days worth of wages. So what do you make in a day? Two hundred of that. Would that feed five thousand people? Um, for some it might, for others it would not. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here who hath five barley loaves and two fishes, but what are these among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000, so there was 5,000 men. And then uh, ordinarily it's assumed there's women and children with them. Jesus therefore took the loaves, and having given thanks, he distributed to them that were set down, likewise, likewise also the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he saith unto his disciples, Gather up the broken pieces which remain over, that nothing be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves, which remained over unto them that had eaten. So they picked up twelve baskets, and they only started with five loaves and two fish. When therefore the people saw the sign which he did, they said, This is of a truth the prophet that cometh into the world. Thereupon the people would have made him king. Jesus, therefore, perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, withdrew himself again unto the mountain himself alone. So, you do something very nice for people and they want to put you on a pedestal. Uh, this clearly is a miracle. And these people thought, well, we're going to make him king, and that way we don't have to worry about ever being hungry again. And we sort of have that same mentality today. If somebody's feeding us, we're, we're happy with them. <laughs> we'll, we'll follow them as long as we get our food. So he had to go away because that was not his purpose in coming. His purpose in coming was for our benefit to save us and when evening came his disciples went down unto the sea and they entered into a boat and they were going over the sea into Capernaum and it was now dark and Jesus had not come to them and the sea was rising by reason of a great wind that blew when therefore they had rowed about 20 or 30 furlongs they beheld Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the boat, they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. They were willing, therefore, to receive him into the boat. And straightway the boat was at the land whither they were going. On the morrow the multitude that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there save one, and that Jesus entered not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples went away alone. Howbeit, there came boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they ate the bread, and after the Lord had given thanks. 
When the multitude therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. So they know he didn't get in a boat, but eventually they decided, well, somehow he got there. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because ye saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. So what was their motivation for coming to see him? Jesus says their motivation was because they liked being fed and all of us like being fed regularly work not for the food which perisheth but for the food which abideth unto eternal life which the son of man shall give unto you for him the father even God hath sealed <clears throat> so which food perisheth and which food abideth into eternal life they said therefore unto him, What must we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What then doest thou for a sign that we may see and believe thee? What workest thou? Now, these people asked him this question the day after they saw that he miraculously fed them. So what does that tell you? They had already forgotten, evidently, that he had fed them the day before. And so now they're looking for a new miracle. So they're trying to make him be, well, magician for lack of a better word. Our fathers ate the man in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. Jesus therefore said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, It was not Moses that gave you the bread out of heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread out of heaven. For the bread of God, which, for the bread of God is that which cometh down out of heaven and giveth life unto the world. They said therefore unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall not hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye have seen me, and yet believe not. All that which the Father hath giveth me shall come unto me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I am come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So he, he wasn't coming down to be king. He was coming down to do what God sent him to do. And this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up, on at the last day for this is the will of my father that every one that beholdeth the son and believeth on him should have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last days the Jews therefore murmured concerning him because he said I am the bread which came down out of heaven and they said is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, who father, whose father and mother we know. How doth he now say, I am come down out of heaven? So they're having doubts about him. Jesus answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the father that has sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up in the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. Every one that hath heard from the Father, and hath learned, cometh unto me. Let's repeat that one. It is written in the prophets, proclaimed in the word of God, and they shall all be taught of God. Taught of God, or by God, 
everyone that heard from the Father and hath learned. So you hear and you have learned cometh unto me. Not that any man has seen the Father, save he that is from God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth hath eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which cometh down out of heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. So the bread that comes out of heaven is the Lord. He's the bread of life. And if we eat of him, if we have relationship, if we partake of him in relationship, we'll have life. I am the living bread which came down out of heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Yea, and the bread which I give is my flesh for the life of the world. So he's going to give up his flesh for us. The Jews therefore strove with one another, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? We have to partake of relationship with him. Jesus therefore said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, accept his sacrifice, and drink his blood, set his blood apart, Ye have not life in yourselves. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood abideth in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he that eateth me he also shall live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. So you've got to have a relationship with him. You've got to accept his sacrifice. These things he said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. And notice there was a crowd that followed him, and they found him. And so he's teaching them all this. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? A hard saying. Who can hear it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured at this, said unto them, Doth this cause you to stumble? What, then, if ye shall behold the Son of Man ascending where he was before. It is the spirit that giveth life, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I have spoken unto you are spirit and are life. So we've got to, he's going to give up his flesh for us. But there were some of you that believed not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who it was that should betray him. And he said, For this cause I have said unto you that no man can come unto the Father, except it be given unto him of the Father. And now the verse, upon this many disciples, many of his disciples, he had a whole synagogue full, went back and walked no more with him. You don't hear this preached. He had a whole crowd in the synagogue. He told them the truth. And upon this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So, I don't know how many stayed, but many left. They walked out of church, and Jesus was preaching. 
and he was preaching himself. They walked out of what we consider church. And Jesus was teaching. And he was preaching himself. And they walked away. Upon this, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So even though he fed them and got them in there, when he told them the truth, they left. Okay? You don't hear this preached on Sunday because churches are about growth. We've got to have more and more and more people, more and more and more people. But Jesus actually says, tell them the truth. And those, those who accept it are the ones that are the church and those who don't accept it, well, they'll probably leave. And yes, absolutely pray for them. Absolutely pray that the Lord will the Lord will soften their hearts, give them some understanding, and they'll come back. But they've got to come to that place in their own lives. They've got to come to that realization in their own lives that a relationship with the Father is the most important thing in their life. The most important thing. Nothing else comes before it. God's completely set apart. 67, Jesus said, therefore unto the twelve, would ye also go away? So he's run off a bunch of people, many. And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So Simon Peter realizes that what the Lord spoke was true and that even those that left there was nowhere else to go because Jesus was the words of life. And he will always be the words of life. And we have believed and know that thou art the Holy One of God. So we have a confession that they know that he is the Holy One of God. And Jesus answered them, Did not I choose you the twelve, and one of you is a devil? So one of the ones that stayed actually is not one of the ones who will be raised on the last day. Now he spake of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So he did not do things God's way. I've never heard this preached in church, which is why I did it. A sermon that makes people walk away, done by Jesus himself. You'll ne I don't think you'll ever hear it. I hope you do. Because any part of Scripture, any, any, any part of Scripture is inspired by God, protected by God for our benefit, for our growth into our relationship with him which we must have to have eternal life. It's so easy in our day to get caught up in growth and not saying anything that might offend somebody and might cause them to leave and all of a sudden our church is smaller and we don't have as much money, we can't do as many programs, yada, yada, yada. I don't like yada, yada, yada. So forth and so on. <coughs> Jesus spoke the truth. His flesh. We have to partake of his death on the cross. His fleshly death on the cross. We have to believe on it. Accept it. In order to be raised on the last day. And I thank you Lord. For that. And I thank you Lord for the preservation of your word. And I thank you, Lord, for any that might listen and any that might grow deeper in relationship to you. And I pray that I will meet them on that last day. In Jesus' name, amen.